Hi, I'm Tom Gillum, and I'm here in Studio A at Green Records, and today we're going to talk a little bit about guitar tone. We're going to talk about some classic guitar tones, and we're also going to show you how you can get a good tone, recorded tone, out of a cheap amplifier. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. <laughs> Now, kind of a, a weird phrase, classic guitar tone. Guitar tone itself is uh, pretty subjective. I mean, there are a million guitar players out there and a million guitar tones. But what I'm going to focus on today is basically the three food groups of uh, classic guitar tone, the Fender tone, the Marshall tone, and the Vox tone. Uh, and a couple of uh, helpful tips on how to record if you're a novice, uh, how to record a guitar amp and also how to make an amplifier that's uh, not a classic amplifier, but still record it and get a good sound out. All right, so we're gonna talk about the three food groups of amplifiers uh, that most people would use, and classic amps, that's what I'm talking about now. Boutique amps, that's a whole other thing, uh, but we're talking about the classic amps, Vox, Marshall, and Fender. Uh, when to use each one. Now, as I told you a little earlier about the Vox amplifiers, they tend to compress a little bit with the type of tubes that they have, so uh, it gets a very chimey sound. I happen to like using a Vox AC30 for rhythm because you can get it just on the brink of distortion. It still sounds full, but it's clean. Uh, so I would use a Vox if I were doing something in the realm of, say, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, or if your music is uh, a little derivative of early British Invasion, those sounds sound good. You can put a Fender Stratocaster through it. You can use a Les Paul through it. Uh, a lot of people will say, ah, I don't really like a Les Paul through it because it sounds, it sounds like it's got too much mud on it. Well, that's why you have EQ. So if your guitar sounds muddy, you're using a Les Paul, that's the guitar that you want to use, turn the bass down. Turn the treble up, mess with the mid-range, you'll get the sound that you want. So, when would I use a, uh, a Marshall 50 watt? Well, I like Southern Rock. I like the early Allman Brothers sound, and that definitely is a Marshall 50 watt sound. Again, the great thing about a 50 watt is it can has a lot of headroom on it, so you can get a little bit of a cleaner sound out of it. Uh, people will say, well, I want to use a Marshall because we want to sound like Led Zeppelin. Here's a little tidbit of information for you. Jimmy Page very rarely used a Marshall in the studio. He used a Supro, a little tiny amp, about this big. And we're going to talk about tiny amps in a minute. Uh, also, a lot of the early Led Zeppelin stuff was done on a Telecaster. Go figure. We saw all those posters with Jimmy Page with the Les Paul that Joe Walsh gave him, but he recorded with a Telecaster. Just goes to show you that you work to get the sound that you want and use the tools that are at your disposal. A lot of people say, hey, when do you use a Fender amp? Well, obviously, if you're doing a country thing, you want to use a Fender amp to get that sparkly clean sound. Maybe use a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. I always thought that Jim Messina from Loggins and Messina and a band called Poco back in the 70s, who was a great country guitar player, I always thought he used a Telecaster because he just sounded like he had a Telecaster. He played with his fingers and it sounded very plucked. But turns out he used a Stratocaster. Go figure. And what I like to do with, uh, with guitar tones, especially for rhythm, even though you want distortion, start a little cleaner than you might normally play. Uh, you are going to want to get your quote-unquote live tone, uh, which is fine. Uh, but remember that your live tone is totally different than what it is going to sound like on record. Uh, also, you got to remember that the tone that you hear from your amplifier is about five feet back and about this far up because this is what you're hearing. So when you stick a close mic up to that uh, amplifier, it's going to sound different than you know than your regular live tone. If you decide to uh, move the mic away from it, it'll sound different. If you mic it in the hallway, it's going to sound different. You got to know what you want to begin with. Okay, so my favorite sound, uh, that, and especially that I used on my last album, which is called Familiar Noise, available wherever you want. Uh, you, uh, I used mostly a Vox AC30 and uh, a Marshall 50 watt. Um, for 
a Marshall with a Les Paul, uh, the tone it tends to be a little on the cleaner side. So if you, uh, when, when you plug into these amplifiers, uh, you know that when you hit that chord, it automatically doesn't sound like Angus Young. Mid-range is your friend. A lot of guys grab an amplifier, they turn the bass up, they turn the treble up, and they turn the mid all the way off, and they go, wow, this sounds like a great tone. You know what we call that? Living room tone, okay? Because it sounds good right there where you're at. But 20 feet out, it doesn't sound that good. Why? Because the guitar is a mid-range instrument. So that's where it throws. That's where it lives. So you're going to get different tonalities by playing with that mid-range. I usually keep my treble a little higher than uh, the, the bass, uh, because especially if you're using a, uh, a, a combo amplifier, a 112 amplifier, you're only going to get so much bass out of it. The more you turn that bass up, the more it's going to like kind of fart up the noise. Uh, so I usually keep my bass like at around, let's say, 11 o'clock. Keep the treble anywhere between 1 o'clock and even go as far as, uh, as uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, the mid-range is where I play. And that is where you want to like hit the sweet spot of the amplifier. And speaking of the sweet spot, the amplifier is not made to be turned up to 10 and run it all the time. That might be good to play a lead tone. But when you want to get a really good rhythm tone, you want to start somewhere around four or five. That's when that amp starts really working, starts humming. And then you want to play around with the volume there uh, a little bit, uh, plus or minus. And if you're in a studio, take the time. Move the microphone, maybe move it back. I like to record the microphone back away from the amplifier so we kind of get the whole uh, the sound of the amp. Now, a lot of guys like to have that mic right on the speaker. You'll definitely get a lot of uh, distortion uh, sound right on the speaker, but because you're getting the sound of the, uh, the paper on the speaker, um, which is not a bad thing. It just is the way that some people do it. I don't really like it that much. And that's the thing. When you're recording, you have to experiment. If this is your first time in a studio, take the time. Don't look at the clock and say, hey, we got to get this done. Take the time to get your guitar tone. The guy with the drums took a long time to get his sound. You need to get your sound as well. Now, the thing that you must remember is you don't need a $5,000 classic amplifier to record. You got to work with what you have and you can get a great sound out of a small amplifier. Now, as I said earlier, most of the classic rock stuff that you can use as touchstones, let's say Eric Clapton, not Cream, but Eric Clapton, and uh, uh, Pete Townsend, uh, Jimmy Page, Joe Walsh, Peter Frampton, all of those guys use smaller amplifiers, especially when they're doing solos, because you can overdrive it and you don't knock the roof off the place. Also, you don't knock the microphone down. Uh, also, when you're using a big amplifier and you turn it up really loud, when it comes out of the speaker in the uh, control room, it's not going to sound as big as it does in the room. You have to use a little smoke and mirrors to make it sound really big. And we're going to show you in just a little bit, we're going to take a cheap amplifier and we're going to show you how to get a good tone out of it. But always remember this, work with what you have. If you have a $200 amplifier, I guarantee you, you can make it sound good if you take your time and mess with the controls. If you have a Les Paul, but you want to get a Telecaster tone, and you can't get a Telecaster, why turn down the bass and turn up the treb? It's not going to sound like a Telecaster, but it's definitely not going to sound like Angus Young either. We're going to talk about how to get a tone out of what you have. Uh, because we were talking about classic amp tones and of course it'd be great if you can get a 50 watt Marshall from 1972 or a Vox from 1964 or maybe a Fender from 1966 but the chances are you don't have that. So we're going to get a tone out of whatever you have and I'm going to give you a few pointers. This is by no means an end-all be-all. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos that will show you how to get tone and I understand that. This is just kind of the way that I do it, and uh, maybe you'll get something out of it. I don't know. What we're going to do is we're going to use my trusty 1980 Heritage Les Paul. And it's the first year of the 59 reissue. 
uh, and the headstock's been cracked off a bunch of times, and it has uh, Seymour Duncan antiquity pickups in it. Uh, they're going to bury me with this guitar, but the reason why I'm using it is because these are low, not low, but lower output pickups. So we're going to hear what this amp can do. Basically, this is your typical $400 range amplifier if you buy it brand new, $200 if you buy them online. It's a cheap amplifier. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple things about this amplifier and any cheaper amplifier that you want to keep in mind when you're trying to record with it. The first is, it's probably more on the trebly side, but let's just hear what the amplifier sounds like. Everything's set at, uh, at five, which is in the middle. I set the clean volume. We're going to listen to the clean. What I do with these amplifiers is I turn the master all the way up. Uh, the reason why I do that is you get the full the full uh, sound of the amplifier, or you're not, you're not cutting the sound. Um, and I'll show you a couple of mistakes that most people make, but we're just gonna try it out like this. So this is what the amplifier just sounds like halfway up. It's okay, not bad, not bad at all. What I would do is um, I would take a little bass out of that. I would um, boost the mid just about there. Turn the treb up, keep the presence where it is. Let's try another clean chord. Ah, it's a little too trebly for me. I'm gonna turn the presence back. Okay, so now we have basic tone of the amplifier. If we're gonna use, uh, well, um, let, me, let, me, let me start with this. Here's the mistake that most people make with an amplifier that has a gain stage. The first thing they do is they hit the gain channel, turn that distortion all the way up, and then start bringing in your volume. So you wanna play here, which is kind of a livable volume. And it sounds okay. But to me, it doesn't sound like a real amp. So what I would do is the first thing is I would take the clean channel and turn it all the way up. And let's see what that sounds like. That sounds like more, more of a classic amp to me. Now, if you really have to use the gain stage, what I would do is I would go to the gain stage, turn the gain all the way down, turn this volume up as much as you want, and bring in the gain. That doesn't sound bad. Now, maybe you want a little bit more gain for uh, lead. Yeah, let's crank it up a little bit. You don't want to go too far with this, though, because it, the more distortion that they have, uh, the, the, the buzzier it sounds when it's recorded. The thing about a gain stage is usually they suck a lot of bottom end out, so I'm going to turn the bass up just a little bit. And if you want to go nuts, you just turn that gain all the way up. This is what this amplifier sounds like turned all the way up. Which to me sounds good for chords. I would use that for chords. And if you have to do leads on it, then maybe you use the gain channel or, I don't know, put a, put a, put a fuzz box on the top of it. But basically, I mean, that's not a bad sound. Now, you might wanna, as we were doing, or I was saying earlier, mid-range is your friend. So here's what happens when you mess with the mid-range.
it's subtle, but you can hear it. I like the mids here, Treb's here. Let's turn the bass down. Because it's one speaker, I don't, I don't like a lot of bass in it. As, as, and, and, and the problem with this, on, on, unfortunately, is you're gonna get a little bit of a hiss. But uh, that means that your engineer has to be good and know what he's doing. And that's what these microphones are. I don't know what they are, but they're at the right, at the right spot. <laughs> Here's your gain channel. Here's your clean channel. Not bad for a buggera. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope I gave you some good advice. You have to take that and do what you will with it. It's all up to you. I'm Tom Gillum from Studio A Green Records. I'll see you next time.